In Singapore's next push to be a smart nation, $120 million for AI in science will go towards building a vibrant research ecosystem and a bilingual talent pool proficient in AI and at least one domain in science. To understand that challenge, we'll speak next to Professor Joseph Sung, is Dean of the Lee Kong Chien School of Medicine at NTU. He is also co-director, Center of AI in Medicine at NTU. Uh, Professor Sung, thank you so much for joining us today. So first of all, could you tell us why it is necessary to be proficient in AI and also be an expert in the field of science? Well, AI penetrates into every aspect of our life from uh, you know, entertainment to shopping. But in science and in my part of the science, clinical medicine, mm -hmm. it is even more important because the advancement can go beyond our knowledge can cope with. Mm. And uh, in medicine, for example, where we deal with life and death situation, a lot of decisions have to be made carefully. Mm. And therefore, with AI, we should be able to make more accurate diagnosis and to perform better treatment for our patients. However, if we don't know how to leverage this new technology, we may not be benefit from it or we may even be replaced by technology. We are looking at an investment of $120 million. How will this additional funding support more research in areas that you are involved in? So in medicine, what we need is to provide more evidence that AI technology can actually translate into better outcome for our patients to give better treatment to our patients. Mm. So this funding will be able to help to do clinical trials so that we can obtain such evidence. Besides uh, clinical trials, we should also put the money into implementation studies, which means that we want to study how technology can be applied to our daily practice to streamline the delivery of service. And that is actually very important because we cannot just impose on clinicians and patients to use this technology. We will need to gain their trust mm -hmm. and support. Uh, if we want to use it successfully. So when it comes to using AI, um, and also you were talking about expanding our clinical trials uh, initiatives, uh, there, naturally there are concerns about its risks and ethics, but patients would want to know, how will the use of AI in science and medicine benefit them? Yeah, I think from the patient's perspective, two major uh, concern is number one whether AI is actually accurate, mm. whether the recommendation that they give give them the best benefit of the treatment. So that part can be answered by clinical trials. The other part that patients usually are concerned mm. is that when their data, when their personal privacy uh, is being exposed to AI, whether this data being used securely, mm. whether um, people will not be able to abuse the data. So data security is another major concern. So for us who are going to use AI in clinical practice, we will have to you know, exercise um, our discretion to use AI in the appropriate way and to reassure our patient that their data will not be leaked. It is really about gaining the support and trust in the patients. Yeah. Uh, have they been generally receptive to using AI tools though? I mean, mm. or, or do you think more needs to be done to encourage them to, to be involved in AI tools? In general, I think our patients are quite uh, receptive to the idea, especially if their doctors and nurses are trusting the use of AI. Mm. However, when it comes to major decision, for example, whether or not they need a major surgery, or whether the robots with AI is doing the surgery is, instead of their human doctor is doing it, yeah. then there will be more concern about it. So I think we will still continue to do more research and also to do more implementation study, as I said, to mm. gain the acceptance and trust of our patients. How will boosting AI adoption and development in science uh, fields stead Singapore amid the global competition? Well, the whole world is moving really fast in this development uh, from drug development, vaccines, new diagnostics, new CT and so on. Yeah. So we should really be uh, putting a lot of efforts and resources to invest onto this mm -hmm. so that Singapore can keep abreast to 
the, the frontiers of, of this uh, new advancement. Where does Singapore stand globally when it comes to AI in science fields, Prof? I would say that Singapore is actually doing very well. Uh, we are uh, ahead of many other countries because we have a very open system. Uh, the data is uh, being used very carefully mm. and uh, the government has put in quite significant resources to develop this. So we are in a very good position to advance further and even lead the world in this area. Uh, looking at this new wave of AI in science and healthcare, how do you think it's going to change or help the industry as a whole? Well, the industry obviously will also benefit from it if AI is developed in the right way and being used appropriately and accepted by the public. Yeah. From the diagnostic company to pharmaceutical company or even company that make machines such as uh, X-rays, CT scans or robots, uh, a lot of AI can be applied into these devices to advance the treatment for our patients. Professor Sung, we appreciate your insights. Thank you so much for speaking with us tonight. That was Professor Joseph Sung from the Lee Kong Chien School of Medicine at NTU.